and welcome to North Lanarkshire Council's Online Visual Arts Programme. My name's Jasmine and I'll be your tutor this week. With the longer, brighter days of summer, we're going to be focusing on the theme of Blast Into Nature. We've got some great ideas and activities to share with you, so let's get some messy clothes on and let's get started. So, this week we're going to be making a jungle painting. We're going to be using acrylic and we've got a template for you in our lesson plan attached to the video. So. It should be pretty straightforward. I know it can maybe look quite intimidating when there's something already finished and looking like completely done right in front of you, um, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. So this is the template. Um, if you want to draw your own thing and just use the techniques that we're going to do today, then you totally can. Um, but this is just something that I sort of whipped together. So for our activity this week, we're going to need some acrylic paint and some various colours. So I've been taught to always use a different uh, mixture of hot and cold colours. So I've got a warm yellow, a warm red, it's cadmium red, uh, titanium white, cerulean blue I think, uh, ultramarine and a magenta. Uh, you'll need some water and a different Few different sizes of paint brushes and um, it's always good to have a little brush sometimes the tools are the problem <laughs> sometimes it's not just um, you not being able to do something in a small detail like um, the ends of your like pointed leaves you'll really need a small brush for that rather than trying to make your big one fit it you'll need a palette and um, it's quite good to have one with different sections for your different colors but you can also use palette paper or something like that they're quite easy to come by something to dry your brushes on um, if you want a scrap piece of paper to test out your colours on, that might be a good idea. I've just used the top of my paper just because I would intend to always crop it down. Um, you'll need masking tape just for the edges of your your uh, illustration. A ruler. Uh, need some pens and pencils. Just um, I would use a pencil for this just to keep it quite invisible once you've applied the paint. But if use a darker pencil so that you can see it here and um, but I would use a 2H and um, because they're quite light pencils you'll need a sharpener because you always do and some coloured pencils um, I'm going to use this sketchbook that we made in week one which you can go back and make if you like um, in the first video that we did of this series so for our warm-up I'm going to be using this and I'm just going to practice some shapes and some textures You'll see that in this example I've got a lot of coloured pencil textures on top of the paint. So we're going to be practising what you might want to do with that because I don't want you to just be replicating what I've got because it's actually quite nice and therapeutic to come up with it as you go. Um, so if you've got some ideas already going from what you've done in the warm-up, that's probably the best way to start. And just some shapes as well because you might want to do your own drawing to start with. So I'm just going to use a pen uh, so you can see it. So I'm just going to half my paper, shapes, and textures. Alright, so I love these big leaves with fronds. They kind of remind me of a fern. And you get some really nice wavy leaves in the jungle. They have really cool like almost like bubbly shapes on them and um, what else have we got oh vines and we have some knobbly branches So you can see how a composition would quite easily start to come together when you're starting to think about shapes. So please don't feel like you have to use this, but it might be easy just to learn. So with textures, I'm just going to use my selection of coloured pencils. So you might want to think about some wavy lines. And it doesn't have to be something that you would typically find on a plant. It's quite nice to keep it quite abstract. It is a painting after all, it's not a photograph, so we can keep things quite fun. Um, how about some stripes? 
The nice thing about pencil is that it's a lovely contrast to the paint and texture. And you might want to think about if you had this leaf, you might do something inside of it. Just roughly to show you. You maybe want to be a bit more neat than that. Alright, so you can keep going with this. Um, and even think about some big scribbly dots. So once you, you feel like you're happy with what you've practiced with, pop that to one side. So if you're using our template, it'll look something like this. And I've used masking tape. I'll just show you by going over it. You might not be able to see it. And where you've got your edges, you're just going to pop some tape down there. Now, a good way to mark out how big you want it to be is just to have a piece of paper laid down on top of it. So what I did was just pop this down and then I marked it with a pencil, just sort of at the edges. And then I put my tape down on top to join these marks up. And then that way you know that you're definitely getting the size and the shape that you want. Um, if you want to do it bigger than this, go right ahead. The template should blow up to about A4, I would imagine. So this is one that I did before. Um, I've marked in quite a lot of the colours already, so I'm just going to do some more colours to show you how we would apply the paint and then the pencil. So I'm going to just pop out some different spots of paint to mix. I'm going to use my mid-sized brush and we're just going to do the tree trunk. So I would wet my brush so that your paint will spread a bit further. And I'll get some yellow and some red. You can see that makes a nice bright orange. I'm going to use the edge of my paper just to test that colour, but you don't have to. So I'd say that's a rough match. Maybe have a little bit more red. You can see it's about the same as the example. I'm just going to apply it on quite thickly. If you're unsure of your colour or you want to be a bit more delicate with it at first, you can water it down and then go in in layers to thicken it up. But I quite like just going in quite boldly. And you can paint over the edge of your tape because you're going to remove this at the end to give you a nice sharp edge, which is quite satisfying to, to do at the end of the artwork. Alright. This is all tree trunk here as well. And you can see how with acrylic sometimes you can see through it. You can see this green through the orange. So you might want to start with your lighter colours first and then build up to dark. Then that way you're always covering the paint that you've just done with a sharper edge. Um, but it really, as you're just learning this technique, it's not the end of the world if things aren't perfect. Alright. I quite like this mask and tape edge technique because it really allows you to not think too hard about going off and colouring outside the lines. Maybe for this smaller branch. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint off this paintbrush and use a smaller brush. And our branch goes further up the page. I'm going to mix a bit more paint. And a bit too red. Let's pop in some yellow again.
All right. So you can see how you would fill this in. It can be quite therapeutic to know that you've already got it all drawn out and you're literally just applying colour. And because you're going to be putting in some of the pencil textures on top, your paint doesn't need to be completely even because it's not going to be the thing that your eye is drawn to really for the whole time. So don't worry if it's a bit messy because acrylic can be quite tricky to be exact with. If you want to be a bit more exact, I sometimes use gouache, which is sort of like a mix between watercolour and acrylic paints. It's a bit more sharp on the edges and it gives you a much flatter matte texture. You can get that pretty much in all art shops. All right. And you've just got a bit of lighter orange at the back just to separate these sections. So you want to make sure that even if you're not following this template, your colours aren't coming into contact with each other. So if you've got an orange here, you wouldn't want this leaf to be orange because it would all blend together. All right, so while I've got this orange on my brush, I'm going to fill in this too. There's not an awful lot of orange in this just because I wanted the these parts to stand out in the foreground um, and also to lead your eye to this bird. Which is quite a nice trick. And I'm just leaving the bits at the end for some green leaves. Alright, don't think I have any more orange. So I'm just going to wash this brush. And we can move on to blue. So this blue is quite a... You can see that it's quite a dusty blue. So I mix this blue with a little bit of this one, quite a lot of white, a little bit of yellow, a bit more of white, let's warm it up a bit with some red. You can see how that brings it closer to a violet. A bit of yellow. And just do this really gradually, mix your paint really slowly because you do tend to find that if you mix basically all your colours together you do get brown. Um, so you want to do this really gradually just before you get to that point you know you can measure how much more you need. Um, so I've mixed basically the two different shades of blue, red and yellow together to give myself this nice blue. I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. You can see that it's quite close to what we've got in the example in here and in here. Not exactly the same but I quite like that this is a little bit brighter. So. apply it and let it flick off onto the masking tape edge and then that way you know you'll have a straight edge because you've went right up to the line. You can vary the shades that you've got of these colours as you go across your composition. It's quite nice, just really 
do what you feel looks nice at the time. I'm just going to use this little brush because it's getting quite difficult in these little spaces with the bigger one. And if you're like me and you end up leaning on your work quite a lot with your hand, you can see how my hand's gotten quite orange. Um, you can use a little bit of piece of like a piece of paper underneath your hand to just um, stop that from happening. I'm afraid I usually forget, but you can do that. And probably would be good to go left to right since I am right handed, but alas, it's not been the case. So, you can see how you start to fill in these shapes. So, switch brushes again. Make this a little bit lighter. Just do this big leaf down here. If you want to tape this down to your to your table, that's normally how I would work. It sort of stops your paper from buckling too much. Um, but sometimes it is nice to be able to put it aside. To dry as well, so it's completely up to you. If you use much thicker paper, that won't be a problem. once you get right down to the sort of nitty gritty of it then you've got a lot of tiny spaces to fill in so this is definitely where you would use your small brush. You can see that this orange looks really vibrant next to the blue because they're contrasting colours. Just try and keep those edges as sharp as possible. I'm just going to sharpen up this tip of this leaf. You can just see how this all comes together. couple more bits to do. So, once you've filled in all of your blue, I think that's me, oh, a little bit up here. So once we've got all of our little blue bits filled in, 
I'm just going to show you how to mix this green because it's quite a muted green that might not be something that you're familiar with. So just really give them a good swirl. You just really want to make sure that there's no more left on that, all right. So your warm yellow, warm blue, give that a mix. That's already a nice green, but you see that it's quite light. So we're going to add quite a lot of white to it and a little bit of red, yellow. And remember I said that it kind of gets close to brown. So you just want to keep adding in small parts to get yourself where you want it to be. And you want it to be quite dark, don't you? So let's see. That's quite a close screen, isn't it? Okay. Let's get rid of that big blob of paint. And use my little brush. Alright, so last thing is the bird. So you can see how this is quite close to a blue or a purple. So we're going to just make it really dark. We don't want to use black because black can overpower an image. It can be quite, can be the only thing your eyes drawn to if you really if it's only in one place, so we want to stay away from that. So I've just mixed some warm blue, some warm red and taken in a little bit of yellow just to mute it down and you can see how that becomes a bit more of a, a dirty purple and it's not quite Willy Wonka purple and it's not quite lilac. It's that brownish. You see it at the top here. So, I'm just going to block in this bird. Remember to leave this bit white. your small paintbrush for this little fiddly bit at the top and then it's tail at the bottom tail feathers and although it's not black black it's really standing out from the rest of the bright colours And then the end of the beak is a little bit dark as well, so we're just going to use it for that. And sharpen that up with a small brush. And there's a stripe along the middle. And then I'm going to put line here. And you'll put your eye on last, so you don't have to do that right now. Alright. So while that's drying just a little bit, I'm just going to put these green leaves on. So 
use a smaller brush, add some white to this. So that it stands out against these green leaves in the background. Don't want, don't want it to blend in, yeah. Okay. If you've got steadier hands than me, then it'll be much easier. Right. So that should be you on the leaves. And then we're going to mix some of this orange, a little bit of white, a little bit of red, then add a lot more white. We're just making a colour for this lighter part of the token, so... Quite a muted pink, I guess. Maybe add a little bit more white to that so that it's going to stand out. Alright, that's a bit better. So, we pop that on. And you know that when you paint this on, you'll still be able to see the pencil eye underneath. So you'll know where to put it. And then we'll do its little claws. Just keep it quite abstract, don't have to go into much detail. And then beak. And if you're taking this slowly, you'll wait until this dark colour dries in. Just try not to mix it. On the bird. There we go. Alright, so all of your paint parts are now painted on. If you want to give it a second coat, if you feel like it's not thick enough or it's not bright enough, then you can go right ahead. For this, I'm just going to show you quickly what you can do in terms of texture. So I just added a really nice stripe onto the orange and when this is completely dry it will be a lot easier to add on. These are really pigmented pencils so it's quite nice to use them on things like this. They really show up. Um, okay, and add it along the rest of the branch. And you can see how when you would build that up, you would get something like this. So let me show you what it's like when you take off the tape. It's really nice and satisfying. So just do it slowly. And you can see how you get that nice clean edge. I think that makes all the difference sometimes because it can start to look really messy on top of your tape if you're like me. There we are. And 
you could crop this down and pop it in a A5, I think it's A5 frame. Um, or you could not use these bits to test out your paint and put it in an A4 frame. Um, it's quite nice with the border actually. But that's how we would do this technique. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Thank you.